Welcome back. You accuse me of keeping secret knowledge that I should share among you. As if a she-bear should show you her cubs or a thrush should tell you where her eggs are nested. There is nothing Nay, no knowledge hidden, saving only from him who seeks the wherewithal to fatten ignorance. And what is fattening ignorance? Believing that anything of experience is something of its own self. There is the root of all problems, as described in Scripture, the root of all evil. And as Joel always drummed into us, Take the axe to the root of the tree. And if we haven't known it until now, there is the root. This is where we take the axe. To the belief that anything at all is something of its own self, rather than God. As soon as we believe that there is anything at all different from or other than separate from God, instantaneously we are being the pairs of opposites. And we're stuck. And we're stuck forever. And that tree of the pairs of opposites grows and grows that tree of ignorance, that tree of evil. Until we take out its root, until we cease from believing that anything at any time, for even one split second, is something of its own self. And this is why actually finding ourselves, first of all, able to, and then actually living without effort, truth, in truth or living truth, is easy because there only ever has been one thing to conquer, just one thing, and that is the belief in something other than God. We can describe, as Lao Tzu used to, the 10,000 things about 5,000 good and 5,000 bad, sometimes more or less of one or the other. Or, more likely, we can describe about 100,000. We can describe our whole life. And particularly, perhaps, we can describe those problems and challenges and discords and pains of our experience. And... We can, as we have done, until the moment we step into true truth, try to bring God to heal these things, pacify these things, harmonize these things, and fail. Or now. And if not now, then when? It's up to you. And if not now, then 
infallibly sometime. You can't miss it, just depends how long you want to drag it out. But when we can hear what we have heard already in this class, and then isolate that one problem, the belief in anything or everything that seems to be other than God, the belief in absolutely everything we can name being something other than God, when we can isolate the whole of life's problem, including good experience. Good experience is a major problem because it doesn't last very long. When we can isolate the one problem as being false belief, actually just belief, all belief is false. Go away and think about that. All belief is false. And then work on that which actually isn't working on it of its own self, otherwise we're doing just the same as we always have done, but working on the understanding, the living understanding that only God is, and only God is absolutely everything of being. We can try and isolate aspects of being all we like. It doesn't make any difference. The fact is, it, whatever it is that we're trying to isolate, is God. Mind is God, period. Go and work it out. And there's a wonderful, wonderful tool to help you. It's called the seven spiritual steps. And if you need more authority than the seven spiritual steps, go and read any of the scriptures. The same message is in there. But in the seven spiritual steps, you have an incredibly condensed extraordinary clear every sentence is so clear and lifts you into the pure truth with all the reasoning you actually need it's all there so use that tool and use it and use it like a a budding master pianist uses music and his or her piano Practice, practice, practice. Live, rehearse with those seven steps. Day in and day out. Like a budding Olympian. Rehearses, practices. Keeps himself and herself fit in prime condition to be able to exercise that skill of athletics. Well, we have to keep ourselves in prime condition in order to exercise the truth of being. And that exercise, that keeping ourselves in prime condition, that rehearsal, that practice, is pondering truth. Ponder truth. Keep your mind on truth. Day in, day out, every minute, because you're walking amongst it. You're living amongst it. I live and move and have my being in nothing but God, because there is nothing but God. Every step I take is full of the kingdom of God. Every breath I take is the kingdom of God. Every sense I sense with, is full of and is itself the kingdom of truth. All of it, indivisible, inseparable from itself and from the experience of it. That's what we do. And in this way, we break or dissolve the threads of false belief we still live with, or the ropes of false belief we still live with. Or the castles of false belief, or the cities or countries or universes of false belief we still live with. They 
each and every one are nothing but false belief. They offer no resistance to your being truthful. Because they're not an entity. They have no body, no power, no mind. Any more than the cinema image on the screen has a real body, a real mind, a real form. The cinema image on the screen and all of it put together cannot resist anything because it isn't real. It cannot resist even a gentle breath because it isn't real. That gentle breath goes right through it because there's literally nothing there. There's no entity that can stop the breath. And in this way, all of experience that we think is real actually isn't at all and can offer therefore no resistance to even one little second of truth awareness. Now what about 10 seconds at a time? What about 30 seconds at a time? What about 60? What about a minute at a time? What about 35 minutes out of every 60? What about 61 out of every 60? Why not fill our whole being with truth? It's free and there's nothing to resist it. Other than a stubborn false belief. Other than senses you have allowed to take over you. You know, we exercise more dominion over a simple little fly that bothers us than our very own senses. If a fly bothers us, we just gently, hopefully gently, if we're in truth, ask her to go and fly around a horse instead of us. We just help her to move away. But when we're sensing matter and believing it to be something of its own self, we allow it. I would rather have 10,000 flies bothering me than 10,000 beliefs bothering me. I really would. Take dominion over your being. Your being is the whole of God being, witnessing the whole of its kingdom. Here and now, this second with no matter in it whatsoever, with no human being in it whatsoever, with no physical body and all its complex organs and functions in it whatsoever, no dollars in it whatsoever, only infinity, the infinity of wealth of all form is at your feet. But you don't see it for one reason, and that's that you've allowed false belief to take you over and convince you that it is real. And yet a fly comes along and immediately you help it away. Nonsensical. Let's hear some more wisdom of Solomon. The upright live forever. I think we should charge one thousand dollars and give you for that $1,000 one line of truth. 
and then ask you to go away with it, with your investment, and only come back when that investment in that one line of truth reveals its whole kingdom of truth. Maybe that is a far more effective way of imparting truth, sharing truth. The upright live forever. If we lose the fear of death, no illness, no disease, no injury can stay with you. It has nowhere to attach itself, stick to, operate in, function in. If you're not fearful of it and its suggested outcome. If you can look at disease, even disease, even what's called fatal disease. Can you imagine? Fatal disease in life alone. Only life is and yet there's fatal disease. Can you imagine that? Life is going to die. If we can look at even fatal illness or disease and really know that it's nothing, you will, the very first time you witness it, be astonished at how quickly it leaves the body. It has nowhere to live. Nowhere to exist without the fear that we attach to it. The only reason we're fearful of something is because we believe it to be something of its own self. Not only that, we believe it to be in opposition to God. It's fighting God. It's fighting life. It's trying to take life, kill life, damage life, limit life, shorten life. So it's battling with God. But only God is, and literally only God is. All of experience is only God, despite the way it appears to be. So if we see disease, and we realize that despite appearance, despite experience, despite knowledge about this disease despite all suggestion about it, for it. We laugh quietly to ourselves and realize it's all nonsense. Only God is. So I'll just get on with my day, thank you very much. And what is that getting on with that I'm getting on with? The Father's business. The business of knowing that I live and move and have my being in God. Not for something, not to battle disease or overcome disease or even dissolve disease, but just because God is, period. Nothing has to be done, God already is. There's nothing other than God and God is finished. So nothing has to be done. So I am about that business, which is enjoying the freedom of being, the truth of being in my expression, with my family, with my love, as my home, in any way I want to. The disease needs none of my attention because it's false belief alone. Certainly because belief, as any other aspect of being, is always formed, as I believe it, I will have a formation, and that could be called a disease, a cancer, a tumour, some form of illness, But the moment I realize that the belief and its form, which is one, are nothing truthful whatsoever, I can just forget about it and get on with my day, literally. And that's what I need to do. If I find myself 
reading more truth to be rid of my disease, then I believe the disease is an entity needing to be rid of, needing to be got rid of. So do you see that we can so easily be tempted into trying to discover truth for some result. And again, let me ask you how that's worked for you. But when we can look at anything, good or bad, and ignore it, in believing it being something of its own self, and just get on with our day, in truth awareness, about the Father's business, with no fear therefore, and again, you can't work on having no fear, you can't work on reducing or taking fear away, because again, you're working on something which you think is real and needs taking away or dissolving. The way you find yourself with no fear is to fill yourself with God awareness. This is always the way. Work the one way. Fill yourself with God. Never mind about the fear. and Never mind about what you're fearful of. Forget it all and come to God and fill yourself full of God. Forget about 2 plus 2 equals 3 or 5 or 28. Don't try to work on correcting that, but fill yourself with 2 plus 2 equals 4. And then 3 and 5 and 28 will vanish from your experience. Don't fill yourself with trying to make an incorrect scale correct. Ignore the incorrect scale and fill yourself with the correct scale. And then the incorrect scale will vanish from your experience. So really, anybody who wants to send me $1,000... Don't make it out to me. Make it out to some beautiful cause or some beautiful spiritual teaching other than the miracle self. And I will accept that $1,000 and pass it on. And I will give you one line of truth which you are to live with until you can see the whole universe of it. And then you can send me another 1000 Same deal. And I'll send you one more line. And we'll carry on like that. All right. For the moment, we'll carry on as we have promised to carry on. The upright live forever. And their reward is with the Lord. Their reward is God consciousness itself. Is oneness itself. Their reward is with the Lord, is with oneness. And the Most High then takes care of them. Therefore they will receive the glorious kingdom and the beautiful diadem from the Lord's hand, for he will cover them with his right hand and shield them with his arm. He will take his jealousy for his armour. Oneness is his armour. Do you remember the scriptural passage? The Lord is a jealous Lord. God is a jealous God. Meaning, nothing but the principle is true. Nothing but oneness is true. Aerodynamics is a jealous aerodynamics because if we get it wrong, it shuns us. It allows our planes to fall right out of the sky or never get off the 
grass in the first place. It's a jealous aerodynamics. Math is a jealous math. It doesn't care about us. It throws us out if we don't align ourselves with it, be faithful to it, love it and it alone. And this is the same with any principle, especially the one supreme principle, which is God. God is a jealous God. Oneness is a jealous oneness. If you try and be two and one, you're going to find oneness throws you out. And so the armour of oneness is what you find protecting you. The armour of you being oneness. Just God and God alone. You will witness miracles throughout your life by just keeping your mind on God and God alone. That's it. You'll witness miracles. And that's just to start with. That's just today. When you walk this earth and realise it and every bit of it is God and nothing but God and then rest. Just get on with the Father's business but joyfully in a free way, not trying to achieve something. It's already achieved for you. Whatever it is you may point at, it's achieved, it's done, it's fully there. But you can't see it because you're not being oneness. Meaning, you're not being God as all of experience. You're not truthfully identifying only God as all, without exception. But when you are, then you will discover the most incredible armour around you, protection happening from all that is not true. And he will make creation his weapons to repulse his foes. What is creation? Oneness. Formation, the truth of being, the truth of all. He will make that truth his weapons to repulse his foes. Do you hear that? Oneness is the weapon. Oneness is the answer. Oneness is itself the miracle. It is itself the life. It is itself the wealth. It is itself the customers, the clients, the students, the opportunity, the ideas, the safety, the peace, the harmony. Oneness itself is this. And it will prove itself as a real and tangible weapon against anything that threatens you, anything that seems to lack, anything that seems to be limited, anything that seems to be untruthful. He will put on uprightness for a corselet and wear unfeigned justice for a helmet. Uprightness, unfeigned justice, again, oneness. God awareness, true identity. He will take holiness for an invincible shield. Mm. Don't you just want to sit with Solomon? Mm. and sharpen his stern anger for a sword. And with him the world will go to war against the madman. Now here we have a reference to the armies fighting amongst themselves. Untruth fights itself, wears itself down. Right in front of you, right at your feet, as you do nothing, but leave it alone and stay in oneness. You will watch whatever it is that's untruthful fall down at your feet, fight amongst itself, go away, never to be seen again. Correct itself, all by itself. Because actually what is there, whatever it is, is nothing but the whole of God as 
harmonious form, as completely perfect spiritual, eternal, harmonious, peaceful, fulfilled form, the image and likeness of God. Only false belief keeps that perfect image and likeness, no matter what it is, from our experience. We ourselves are blocking it from experience. Well-aimed flashes of lightning will fly and will leap to the mark from the clouds as from a well-bent bow. And from a catapult, hailstones full of wrath will be hurled. The water of the sea will be angry with them and the rivers will roll relentlessly over them. A mighty wind will oppose them and winnow them like a tempest, and lawlessness will lay waste the whole earth, the whole of untruthful form, the whole of the pairs of opposites, and wrongdoing overturn the thrones of princes. There is the whole battle of the pairs of opposites that destroy themselves as we simply stay in truth, stay in oneness. Listen, therefore, kings, and understand. Learn this, judges of the ends of the earth. Pay attention, rulers of the people, who boast of multitudes of nations. For your dominion is given you from the Lord. Your power, your life, your love, your wealth, your purpose, your whole truth, your satisfaction, your freedom is given you from or as the Lord, as the consciousness of oneness. This is life. The consciousness of oneness doesn't produce life. It doesn't heal life. It doesn't restore life. It doesn't harmonize life. It doesn't harmonize beings. It doesn't pacify wars. It doesn't generate dollars somehow. Oneness is God. And because God is mind, is form, oneness is all good and plentiful and complete, harmonious, peaceful form. Oneness is, is, is. Can you hear that? Oneness itself is your whole infinity of good, right here where you are. If you are waiting or ever find yourself waiting for oneness to do something for you, you have no truth at all. Oneness is God. Is your good. In other words, when you are being the consciousness of oneness as your entirety, You have God right here and now. Don't be concerned that it may take a few minutes or a few hours or even a few days to be visible or tangible in what you call form. Don't be concerned about that. As soon as the very millisecond you are being oneness, you have all that God is. There's nothing else to happen. Your dominion is given you from the Lord and your sovereignty from the Most High. The Lord of all, right there we have it, the Lord of all. The Lord cannot be of all if the Lord is not all. The Lord can only be Lord if all is all the Lord. And in this way, God is all, and God can only lord over all if God is all, and God indeed is all. For the Lord of all will show no partiality, 
and will not respect greatness. Will not respect anything you think. Will not respect anything that is deemed to be something different. Will not respect your knowledge, your intellect, your wisdom. Because anything we may believe is nothing. For it was he who made small and great. And he takes thought for all alike. Now, I love that one line. I think that should be a $5,000 line, not a $1,000 line. He takes thought for all alike. Is, let's use this language for a second as a metaphor. Is any of God, and be careful this time, unmanifested? No, there is no unmanifest God. If there were, or if it were possible, and it is not, But if it were, there would have to be two separate departments in God. One department unmanifest, some ethereal God somewhere, in half of omnipresence. And the other department has somehow, through some miraculous process, made the invisible and the unmanifest visible and manifested. There's a lot of workers in the middle there somewhere, busily making the invisible visible, and the unmanifest manifest, and the undemonstrated demonstrated. But only if we pray right, and if we're very, very good people. It's nonsense, it's nonsense, it's nonsense. There is no unmanifested, undemonstrated, invisible, or intangible God. Because only oneness is. If you can see anything at all, if all you can see is a grain of sand, then that proves that the whole of God is visible. Because there's nothing different in God. So if you can see anything, then you can see the whole of God. The function of seeing is truth. And all there is to see is God. Unless you're still thinking that that grain of sand isn't God. I can see the grain of sand for sure because it's a grain of sand. But I can't see the rest of God. Hmm? I can see my notebook. I can see a table. I can see my love. I can see my beautiful friends. If I think that this is only a tiny, tiny bit of God, any of this, then I believe that God is divisible. But I've been told... That God is indivisible. God is one. And wherever I may be, and whatever I may be observing, is the whole of the infinite right there at not only this place that I'm observing or being, but at every place that is simultaneously. So this place, or this thing, or this love, or this friend, or this activity, or this amount, or this condition is nothing but the whole of God. Well, if the whole of God, how could God be invisible? You are the whole of God. Well, I can't only see your ear and the rest of you is missing. The rest of you is invisible. I can see all of you, and all of you is the whole of God. Therefore, I can see the whole of God. 
Ah, but you're thinking, what about dollars? What about my home? What about my car? What about Australia? In that case, how are you thinking? Materially. Aren't you? You're thinking when it is said the whole of God is visible, that there's a lot of matter that is invisible. To me at least. There's a lot of matter that will come up as the grasses and the trees and the flowers and the fruits next year that are invisible this year or next season that are invisible this season. What is that but material thinking? Corporeal thinking. Corporeal belief. Do you believe that there will be a season after this one? Well, then your belief is corporeal. There's only one season in God. And the leaves never fall from it. Neither does the fruit. Do you believe that you could have more dollars tomorrow or next week or next month or next year than you have this minute? Then you are believing in corporeality. There is only one amount in God, and that is infinity. And because God is mind, is form, all of form is here this very second. If you're still finding that hard to believe, you are still believing in corporeality. Form is not corporeal, form is incorporeal. And the whole of the incorporeal is right here where you are. Therefore, the whole of God is right here where you are. What is demonstrated? What is manifested? What is visible? What is tangible? Well, only God is, yes or no? And what is God, corporeal or incorporeal? Incorporeal, therefore, what we term as manifested is incorporeal manifestation. What we term as demonstrated is incorporeal demonstration. What we term as visible and tangible, what is the only visible and tangible is the incorporeal. If we're thinking or believing or looking for corporeality, then we're out of truth. Remember, remember that which we experience as corporeal is simply a sense of that which is 100% incorporeal. There is the key. As we increase our living awareness of incorporeality, therefore as we seek nothing but greater light of, greater awareness of, the incorporeal, then our awareness is illumined. And with illumined awareness, we see more of what? Incorporeality. And because the mind is sensing the incorporeal as being corporeal, the more incorporeal awareness we have, the more of its corporeal image and likeness we have. And to material consciousness or belief, that looks as if we suddenly are healed or we suddenly find ourselves doing very, very well in our business. We have plenty of dollars or it appears as if love walks into our life or our existing life opens its petals and blossoms and is more beautiful and purposeful than ever. This is what it appears to be, or what appears to be happening through material sense. But what's actually happening is that increased incorporeal awareness has been achieved in this very way that we're speaking of, and that increased incorporeal awareness that we are now being as our whole experience 
enables our light to show us more of itself. And because the mind is the image and likeness in corporeal form, we now have more of good corporeal form, whether it's a healed and healthy vital body, plenty of dollars, love and happiness and freedom in the rest of our life and our relationships. There it is. There's the whole thing. And so in this way, when we read, he takes thought for all alike, you can now remember that. You can now know that everything you see, everything, every grain of it, you realize God is taking thought about it as the allness of itself. God is existing right there and God knows itself right there. God is being itself right there as whatever it appears to be, as the whole of itself. And because there is no unembodied, unmanifested, undemonstrated, invisible or intangible God, the whole is actually there. The perfection of that form, the fulfillment of it, its life, its love, its beauty, its plenty is all there. Even as we're peering at it and it appears to not be there. It is there. And as we increase in our incorporeal awareness and realize what we're witnessing is an incorporeal formation. The mind does not produce corporeal formation. That's just how we've unfortunately described it. The mind is God and therefore is 100% incorporeal. Therefore the forms of mind are also 100% incorporeal. 100% God. Read step four, listen to step four, love step four, fall in love with step four, take it to bed with you, sleep with it, get up with it, take it to breakfast with you, take it to lunch, take it to work. Keep it by you. Make it your heart's desire and your heart's fulfillment. And you will discover that only God is, and God is incorporeal, God is the mind, therefore the mind is incorporeal, and form is the mind, therefore all form is incorporeal. So as you now observe experience, be the living recognition of the incorporeality of all form. It doesn't matter that it appears to be what we've described corporeal. It isn't. It's incorporeal. And because it's incorporeal, it's omnipresent. It's infinite. And it's that awareness that reveals the miracles of God all over your land. But a rigorous inquiry is in store for the powerful. My words are addressed to you, therefore you monarchs, so that you may learn wisdom and not go astray. For those who observe holy things in holiness will be made whole. Can it be more clear or more precious? For those who observe God in God. For those who observe God for God, as God. For those who observe the incorporeal as the incorporeal. Those ones are made whole. And those who are taught them will have a defense to offer. So desire my words, long for them, and you will be instructed. Wisdom is bright and unfading, and she is easily seen by those who love her. God is easily seen everywhere as everything by those, by us who love God. 
who see, who accept nothing but God. As all. For those of us who are not trying to change that which isn't God to God. Because we now know that all already is God despite appearance and we know that as we fill ourselves full of God so that our whole universe is full of a living God awareness we know that that very fulfillment of God as being reveals the image and likeness of God as form. We know that. We don't have to ever do anything to any of experience except fill ourselves full of God. And then the miracle of God is standing right before us. And she is easily seen by those who love her and found by those who search for her. Remember Jesus, seek not the things, but rather seek the kingdom of God and all the things All the images will sort themselves out. They'll be added unto your experience as harmony, as peace, as life, as abundance. Don't worry about those. Just be concerned about filling yourself with the truth of being and world, which is 100% God. She forestalls those who desire her by making herself known first. The man who rises early to seek her will not have to toil, for he will find her sitting at his gates. For to think of her, hear this closely, to think of her, to keep our attention, to keep our mind on God, is the highest understanding. Don't try to understand anything else of life. You don't need to, and if you do, you're delaying your God experience. Thinking of her, thinking of God, is itself the highest understanding. And the man who is vigilant for her sake will soon be free from care. For she goes about in search of those who are worthy of her. And this is exactly like the ocean who goes about in search of a little hole in it. And the whole ocean fills that little hole. Another way of Hearing this, which we've heard for many, many years, is that God abhors a vacuum. As soon as we've emptied ourselves of false belief and we're receptive for God and God alone, then God seeks us. God is infallibly our experience after that. This is what Solomon is referring to. And she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. Isn't that beautiful? So here we go with the truth of experience blossoming everywhere or fulfilling itself everywhere. She graciously appears to them in their paths. Everywhere you go, there is God as the fulfillment of form and meets them in every thought Our very thinking can't veer from God thinking. It's impossible. Every thought is a God thought. It's impossible to be tempted away from the realization that anything at all is actually, despite appearance, God. It's impossible. Because we know it is God. So how could we possibly veer or Be tempted away from a living awareness, which includes thought, of course, about and of God. Well, 
so much more to share with you, but let's stop here for this class.